With the election just one week from tomorrow, I know many people are struggling with who they're going to vote for come this election day. And let's be honest, many Americans have turned voting into a feelings-based decision rather than a mathematical one. Now, what do I mean by mathematical? Well, in the world of politics, policy is king. And the majority of policy isn't determined based upon how you feel about it or how I feel about it. It's determined based upon need or statistics or science or a variety of other measures. So when it comes time to vote, you're voting based upon the empirical impact that policies will have on your life as well as future generations. You don't go into the voting booth and vote based upon how a particular candidate or a certain political party make you feel. No, that's ridiculous. You vote based upon policy. So when it comes time to vote, we need to check our emotions at the door and we need to return once again to a logical mathematical approach to voting. Now, how do we do this? It's, it's really simple. So you got two candidates running for the same office. Both candidates have policy positions. What you do is you compare their policy positions against each other and whichever one most closely aligns with your values and beliefs and whichever one will most benefit future generations, well, ding, 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 that's the one you vote for. Now I know, I know, I know, I know. Someone's gonna say, oh, well, Josh, it's not like voting for the lesser of two evils. Uh, last time I checked, you weren't voting for the position of Pope here. You were voting for a political candidate. And guess what? You're always voting for the lesser of two evils. That's just reality. That doesn't mean that's wrong. That just means that's what is. Look, if you want to vote for the guy who's got the, the, the best morals, the best character, and who's the most qualified, well, ask him to run. But if he's not on the ballot, he's not part of the equation. You know what matters are the people who are most available, and those are the people on the ballot. Now, every election cycle, we're polarized, right? You always have the people who absolutely love their particular candidate and those who actually loathe a particular candidate. And then you got everyone else in the middle who's like, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to feel. Am I supposed to love? Am I supposed to hate? Am I supposed to vote? Am I supposed to not vote? Should I be excited about the future? Should I be depressed about the future? Good news, you don't have to worry about how you feel about any of that. Because when it comes to voting, it's not about what you feel, it's about what is. The empirical impact of policies on your life and future generations. And I promise you, if that's the way you vote this November, not only will you be better off, but all of America will be better off.